un unlike the other candidates, uh, the other two candidates I've interviewed, he 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 doesn't, in my opinion, have an adequate appreciation of the urgency of the issue, mm -hmm. and um, and and that's a real pity. He voted against the declaration of a climate emergency. But he does have I, many I, ideas about mitigation and ad adaptation. Um, there's, there's another candidate who hasn't been on council before who said that he would declare a climate emergency in his first 90 days, but then asked what would he do about it he had very few ideas, very few ideas of what he'd actually used to. I mean, he said the right things. He said he'd listen to people and, and, um, and you know, understand what people wanted, which, which would be good. Um, so, uh, so this guy won't clear, declare a climate emergency, but does have many ideas for action on it. So anyway, that was the first thing I did. And what I just finished in the minute before I connected with you was a letter to our foreign affairs minister. Uh, how can I summarise my letter? Asking him to beef up uh, aid investment in re access to reproductive health services and girls' education which as you will know, is very high on the list of uh, levers for climate change mitigation. I would think uh, uh, it's already handled in New Zealand. New Zealand is one of the most progressive countries in the world. And I, I would think, you know, that's something that is already well under control. Uh, if you mean New Zealand in terms of, of uh, internal access by women in the the New Zealand population of women mm -hmm. probably have I, I I actually don't know but I I I'm assuming that most women have access to contraception who want it mm -hmm. at at reasonable cost no I, I'm I the the argument was for our foreign aid to be directed oh, mm -hmm. in that way and our, our priority countries for foreign aid are the Pacific Islands and, um, and the poorest countries in Asia. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's probably highly relevant to those countries. Hmm. So that's what I just did a minute ago. Mm -hmm. And that, that would be on behalf of, of the national organization I work with, our climate declaration. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. So how's that project coming? You were, you were the big cheese, aren't you? Uh, I'm the I'm the convener, but the intellectual big cheese is not me. Is it's uh, the former leader of the Green Party, Jeanette Fitzsimons, who who is a very clever woman and a highly experienced and very well connected woman. Mm -hmm. Um, so she's she's intellectually the big cheese in in that group. Mm, okay. And and a very nice woman. I really really value her friendship. Uh huh. She does. She, I have the impression she doesn't live near you though, and that you. No, she lives far away in the North Island. Mm, okay. Yeah. No one, no one, <laughs> no one of national importance lives near me, but lots, <laughs> of, <laughs> lots of lots of terrific people do live me, near me, at, w with whom I greatly enjoy working mm. in my local group, Zero Carbon Nelson Tasman. It is that, just back. Yes, yes, he came back a few days ago. By the way, um, what did he tell you about Graham's health? You alarmed me. By yes. To poor, yes. poor health. Yes. Yes. Well, and hello, hello, Barbara. Hi, Hi. I'm Hi. I'm fine. <laughs> Even though I'm invisible, I'm really fine. I would be. <laughs> you would see me smiling at you if you could see me. I'm going to keep my. Something is wrong with with access to my camera. And so I'm just going to keep trying throughout the meeting to get access to okay, the camera. But before, before we get to uh, 
does, do, can you finish your sentence about Graham? Yes, yes. Now, um, bear in mind when I say this, that Graham, as both of you know, is a very private sort of person. Yeah. Uh, so just take care of this. Um, he, he has prostate cancer, mm. um, metastatic prostate cancer. Mm. And, um, but Jack said that the, the prospect he'd been given was six or seven years. Mm. Um, so that's, that's where things lie. But uh, I, I would say that it, of the two of you, I'm, you know, if someone else asks you, I think maybe keep that confidential. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, I mean, if it was someone else, I don't think I'd say that, but Graham just is that kind of person. Mm -hmm. well, I'm very sorry to hear it. Uh, you know, is he uh, still in Hamilton, Joanna? Yes, yes, I think he is. And I, I think he's just carrying on his usual life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, Amy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I've got people here helping me. Creeping oh, around, that's, picking up. That's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear you have people there helping you. I hope that's working out all right. Well, it, oh, it, it is and it time. isn't. I have, I have five assistants uh, plus uh, this girl and her mother. Uh, <laughs> uh, so And my cleaning lady. <laughs> so that makes uh, eight people who work for me occasionally by thank you dear wow. <laughs> who work right. a little bit here and there but you know when you have that many people uh, sort of hello adele <laughs> hello hi, adele hi, everyone <laughs> hello hi. what are you doing there i can't see what you're you're trying to twiddle with something aren't you well i had to turn the volume up Oh, you have got a fake screen behind you. Well, yes, I do, I but know. I'm going to get rid of it and go back to messages. That is the funniest thing I ever heard. You, <laughs> I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell him right now, Adele. Are you okay with that? Oh, yeah, I, I'm fine. I, I just, just didn't get around to fixing it. Yeah, I, I Adele, didn't. last time, gave, gave, you know, we she set up her, her uh, camera in her own uh office and which, which was i thought it was a wonderful office and it was she thought it was too messy it really was a little bit messy and it's nothing like how messy i am and and so she bought this thing this fake picture to put behind herself to make it look like she has a tiny <laughs> office <laughs> well I, I got a free thing from chroma comb uh, chroma comb or something anyway uh, so chroma, you can you can do it yourself, and you can get a whole bunch of different stuff if you pay a bit to them. But if you get the free stuff, you have a choice of various things. And I'm now in a Bay Street office, so so there, enjoy it. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a wiggly thing behind me that you see all the time. That that if, if you pay money, you can get rid of that. <laughs> it has to do with me moving my hair. There's, is, um, is it chrome or what? There's a thing in your hair that mm -hmm. is saying C-H-R. Uh, yeah, chrome cam, C-H-R-O-M-E, C-A-M. <laughs> I think that is so cute. Hello, Paul Meyer. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Paul Meyer. I can see your name, but so I know you're, you're hiding there somewhere. Uh, hello, Paul. <laughs> While, while he comes on, can I just ask Barbara if you might adjust your screen a little because I just see half of your face. Yeah. Oh, good idea. Yeah. Oh, that is better, Barbara. Thank you. I uh, should up. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> yeah, looks right? <laughs> better? Yeah, actually, yeah. you look very good. I like your haircut. <laughs> <laughs> nice haircut. How's that? Okay. That's good. good. Like that. That's closer. There we go. <laughs> Uh, that's good. good. We, yeah, everybody looks good except for Paul Meyer, who's hiding behind a black screen. Uh, Paul, you <laughs> I, I don't even hear you, Paul. So I don't know what that means. Um, oh, there he is. Here's another Paul. It's a different Paul. <laughs> this is Paul Dowson, everybody. And I get oh. introduced. Hello. 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 Hi. I'm I, I'm the invisible person, Joanna. Yeah, Joanna and Paul Meyer are both invisible. But now we have Paul Dowsett, who was 
uh, who looked uh, all uh, for two hours. Uh, he looked like a telephone. <laughs> <laughs> he was. Uh, I spent two hours with him from two to four. He was driving from a cottage back home, and uh, he did it by phone. And when you got come in by phone on on this Zoom thing, it looks it puts his image up like a telephone. Paul, now that Paul Meyer, there is a, a microphone with a with a, a mic uh, with a line through it. So you have muted your microphone, or you, you should unmute it. And um, I recommend uh, that you look at the lower left-hand corner of your screen and click on the microphone, and that should do it. Yes, I've done that. Yeah, yeah. I've done that now. Thanks. You've done that. Okay. Well, so far, so good. Now all we have to do is get you uh, on camera. Well, I, I'm, uh, I'm reluctant to do that just because I've had problems with my laptop in terms of capacity. So I'm oh. thinking it may be best to safer just to stay on audio. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, fine. We've got two invisible people and one newcomer that I get to introduce here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't get over <laughs> Adele's... Uh, <laughs> Background. <laughs> anyway, uh, Paul, Paul Dowsett you, is a, 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 a member of the steering committee. I had a wonderful conversation with him uh, a couple of hours ago as he was driving back to Toronto from his cottage. And he's a, a, an architect for sustainable architecture. And he, he's done wonderful things for, for architecture. So we have, we're very lucky to have him. Thank you, Maida. So, yeah. Okay, say a little bit to us so we all get to see a good look at you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> see if I can come up uh, come up on the big screen. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I understand that you guys have had one or a couple of these meetings before in in months past. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that true? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, this is... Uh, Unfortunately, this is the first one I've been able to join, but, uh, and again, my apologies for being late, but here I am, and uh, I would, uh, I'd be very appreciative of um, a short recap of uh, you know, what you've talked about in the past, and kind of where we are, where we are today, if, if that's, if that's at all possible on the agenda. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I should have sent that to you if I didn't. Um, okay. Well, I, I think I could ask somebody else to give your recollection of what you think were highlights of our past conversation. Would anybody um, volunteer what you think was memorable, if anything? Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Um. Well, that means nothing was memorable. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that it was memorable. Some of, some of our memories aren't very good. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it, hon. <laughs> Perhaps that's more the truth, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, uh, I would say that um, our preoccupation has been how to get the website going. And I have to confess, I'm extremely embarrassed tonight to say that I'm. I. it doesn't look like I'm much farther ahead further uh, along than I was uh, a month ago. Uh, in fact, I, we are a lot further ahead, but, um, but it, it sure doesn't look like it online. There are things being done to the website in the background. But what has happened is I have five people doing computer work for me, and they all try to do something, a special new project, and they're actually effective people for the most part, but um, they try to do something, they'll get to a point where they need some information that only one of the others has, and that other one happens to be away for two weeks, and so on. So we, uh, we get to, you know, we get bogged down at points. And I have every reason to hope that within the next few days, you will see some improvement, especially uh, my concern is mainly with the event listing, which... Uh, the app is not uh, adequate, and um, I've been working on that. And there's the man who's been doing it. It's really I don't know what's the matter with him, but at any rate, I've got I've got to get I've served notice on him that he has to either perform or um, get replaced. Uh, 
anyway, that's that's that as far as the website is concerned. And in fact, there really isn't anything else to our project except, from my point of view, you know, putting together a really useful website that, uh, and then reaching out to the people around the world who can use it and benefit from it. And uh, I suppose that's what we ought to talk about most here tonight. And that's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's, we've now heard the agenda, which is, let's talk about how to, um, when things are actually working, how we can uh, connect with the right people and, um, and show them uh, the, the benefits of, of what we're trying to do. And, uh, and Paul uh, Adasa and I had a bit alluded to that in our conversation this afternoon, because we agreed that really the important thing that we are especially able to do or should be able to do is to bring together people from these several different um, global issues who are specialists, but to find the overlap between them and maybe bring uh, have conversations between experts in these different fields and um, who, who have some uh, common uh, problem that, that they, you know, that is, is uh, shared by both sides. Um, so I, I wonder, you know, let's just think about how to make use of what we hope will be a really useful website soon. Anybody, any thoughts? <laughs> well, well, there'll be um, people at the end of September uh, meetings, a group of 78 meetings and pugwash and so on that could help with that sort of contact or mm -hmm. give some ideas. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so as as I think most of you know, the in the there's a, I'm going to be in Ottawa five days, so it's a time when both uh, Pugwash and uh, PGS uh, positions, that is, a uh, group of seventy eight, and uh, this uh, what are you, I can't think of the acronym for the other the CNAW and one of the other groups will be having seminars and all day meetings and presentations and so on, and. Um, I think, frankly, that, you know, the physicians are, in a way, the most, um, I want to say, um, eclectic, I, I guess, inclusive, in that almost <laughs> all of our th global threats can be considered a health threat, you know. Uh, certainly, you began with nuclear weapons, but global warming presents all kinds of health threats. Uh, certainly famine and pandemics do um, and um, uh, and that's in a way what we need because we and of course also radiation exposure where's Richard Denton anyway he's usually here uh, talking about radiation exposure um, and and, uh, and then cyber attacks a little a little less obviously so but almost all of the um, uh, the the global threats that we have are you know, by in one sense of the word, health challenges, and so uh, in a way, you're the most in inclusive. Uh, your agenda, your mandate, is the broadest, isn't it? PGS, Barbara. Um, yeah, I would. I would think it maybe uh, certainly. Um, mm -hmm should connect with IPPNW too, they, you know, uh, cause they have outreach all over the world, you know, um, um, you know, they have a small arms interest as well as nuclear weapons um, as, and in various parts of the world. Well, you know, there are certain groups of people we just do not have any representation from. Uh, and I think it would be very interesting to work on trying to recruit some uh, specialists, uh, experts on both famine and pandemics, because those two things are the very most obvious um, 
combinations. You know, they every time you have a, a famine or you're going to have a pandemic, you're going to have a famine and vice versa almost. They, they historically have always uh, uh, been uh, joint uh, prob problems. And I wonder if maybe what we could do is set up a conversation somehow by reaching out to um, some people really are knowledgeable about both famines and pandemics and that way kind of try to in, uh, broaden our base because our base is so far pri primarily people in war and weapons, people working on, I think PGS includes a lot of people with a focus on radiation issues, radioactivity problems and so on. Um, and to some extent global warming, but, uh, but um, I don't think that we have enough contacts with um, uh, people working on pandemics or epidemic issues or um, um, or famine. And in particular, I still have not been able to contact uh, uh, Alex Duval, who is this professor at, at Tufts, who's a real expert on, on famine. And uh, I, I haven't quite given up on him, but I think uh, since he's been traveling all summer and hasn't replied to my messages, it's not a good sign. So I don't think we may be able to get him be, to be on the steering committee. And we just plain don't have anybody except, um, well, anybody really, uh, who's an expert on famine. Um, and there aren't that many, frankly, because what we have are a lot of people who are interested in food security issues. Uh, hunger and uh, uh, shading off into the challenges of regenerative agriculture and that sort of thing. Uh, but, but those problems, the economic and the technological development problems, are in a way different from the famine problem because that a famine is oh, nowadays, uh, currently, always a human rights issue primarily rather than oh. an economic or or, or technological problem. Or can I, can I? Oh, sorry, Meta. Yeah, go ahead, finish, that's fine. I'm through. Um, yes, I, I can't easily signal a wish to speak when you can't see me. <laughs> um, um, Barbara, do you know if Sheila Zerbrick is still around and working? Because she might be considered an expert on famine. Um, she's in the Toronto area um, and she moved up from Nova Scotia a couple of years ago and had brief contact with her when she first arrived, but haven't had since. But uh, I guess we could try and see if we can find her. I know where she is. I spoke to her. Did you? Uh, yes. And um, <coughs> I can't remember what she said, but I had the feeling like, Maybe she was going away for a year, or there was a, a sense in which she'd be kind of out of, um, you know, out of touch with things here. And I didn't, um, she didn't seem all that interested in what we were doing. It might be that you, as friends of hers, one or both of you, could uh, have more uh, persuasive power than I have in talking with her. What exactly has she done on famine? Do you, do you know her work, what, what it is? Um, she, she, I, go ahead, Barbara. No, well, she was very much involved with the Iraq war and uh, stuff, wasn't she? Um, and and I'm trying to think what her actual position was in Halifax, but um, um, certainly public health was part of it. Um, Am I wrong in thinking that it was more historical, you know, like she's a historian or? Yes, I think that that's correct. And I think, I think looking at the political causes of famine <coughs> has, has been an was an area of interest, but this is many years ago. I don't, I don't know what she's been thinking about recently, but, but um, famine as a political phenomenon was something that she had looked at. Well, uh, I think that's a good idea. We should certainly reach her as well 
as we can. Anybody else with any, any ideas of people who are interested in famine? Because I, I only know of one other person, and that is someone Joanna knows too, this woman, Rhoda. And uh, she was most unfriendly. Um, I think Joe's had that experience too, right? Is there any, any reason to keep trying to recruit her when uh, she seems very standoffish? But she certainly knows her stuff. And, you know, she should be somebody that, uh, you know, because of her position, she's, she's a, one of those... Uh, high-powered position. She had one of those special uh, professorships. I think it was at uh, Wilfrid Laurier, and she's been retired for a few years. And she had a book, uh, which was very much on, on, you know, along the lines of talking about the uh, threats to um, uh, human rights, you know, the food shortage is a uh, manipulated uh, thing that, and, and, and demanding um, uh, some sort of um, convention on, uh, you know, uh, forbidding uh, of famine as a, an intentional project uh, through, you know, international law, that kind of thing. The book was really uh, very valuable and very relevant, and she lives in Hamilton, so she's a logical person to try to bring in, but my goodness, she was... Um, <laughs> really quite un, un, uh, hospitable and not, not willing to talk and I think I don't know if, if anybody knows her or knows anything about how to get to her and I guess the real question is who would want to I, I would favor contacting Sheila first okay that's a polite way of saying what I thought you meant <laughs> Okay. I can ask. Um, I have a feeling that Vinny had some contact with Sheila not long ago. I can ask him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Um, is, it, is it timely to go back to the, the more general issue of, of getting the word out there about the uses of the website? Certainly, you know, it was, I don't think we're following a, a, a set schedule of things because that is part of the whole project. Yeah, what do you have thoughts about, Joe? Well, it, it seems to me that some of the some of the meetings of relevant organisations, it would be it would be quite good if even a brief presentation on what the website has to offer. Um, given by a real person at a real conference, face-to-face -face contact, um, would be a helpful thing. And I, I'm thinking particularly of the, the Pegasus conference yes. that Neil Aria um, is organising. And it, it, is, it is a little time away. I mean, it's, it's next year, not April. Not Mm -hmm. April, is it? Yeah. Um, but say a, a ten-minute presentation. It actually is calling calling for presentations now. Mm -hmm. um, a ten-minute presentation on the website and demonstration of, of the website. I I would think would lead to pick up by a proportion of of the listeners. Mm -hmm. um, similarly, for the for the conferences that you mentioned. Meta that, that, that you're going to Ottawa uh, at a time to uh, to be present at some of those conferences, are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I expect to attend everything. Um, I'm not sure the PBS thing is uh, quite. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not a core member of that in any sense. So maybe we could ask somebody else to make a little pitch there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. Barbara, are you going to the PGS? Um, I, I hope so. I'm just trying to organize, see if I can get there. Uh-huh. Well, I hope not, to be, Richard, we, you know, Richard Denton is also one of us, the steering committee, and uh, um, I, I think that um, Ron uh, St. John is not a member of uh, PGS, but he is certainly a physician, 
-hmm. And uh, he was going to try, he's, he's, he's in Iowa today, and he was going to try to get to a motel and turn on his webcam. So he might, might pop up during this meeting, but I wouldn't be on it. Um, Is there any possibility of, of one of your helpers developing a 10-minute uh, pitch for the website that, that then others who are less adept with the technology uh, could just do at a, at a conference? Show them how to use it. Uh -huh. Well, sure. Uh, it isn't that hard to do. You mean make a video or make a, uh, you know, write up a speech that other people could follow the outline when demonstrating or, it or something? Or make up, make up the, 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 um, the visual part mm -hmm. of a speech. Mm -hmm. Like an introduction or a, a training session or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. And in fact, um, my concern has been that we, um, that the uh, the the front page, the first you know, the landing page of the home page of the of the website, when you get to it, it was it has looked you know quite beautiful. I think the design has been classical and quite, uh, but it's austere and it's not particularly inviting in the sense that it doesn't catch your attention or make you do anything. So what I have done is. Um, I've had, um, you can already see that part had changed on the website. Uh, I've moved uh, up above the uh, list of uh, platform for survival uh, planks. I've, I've inserted a, a, a slideshow, um, a colored blue a space where uh, there will be uh, tips from various current uh, conversations going on on each of the uh, forums, you know, there's a, in effect a, a forum for each uh, global issue of the seven uh, categories. And some people have been int uh, adding um, uh, interesting material they got elsewhere uh, and, and commenting on each other a little bit, although not nearly as much as we want. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is we have the first uh, uh, 50 words or so of a comment put into on this slide and then after you have a chance to read it it changes to the next one and so on and the message above it is that if you want to participate in this conversation you click on one of the links the blue underlined links on that page and it will take you to the, um, the comments column or the discussion column um, of that particular topic so you can join in the conversation well as of as of now there's a technological problem, so it really doesn't take you where it's supposed to. But uh, I hope within a few days, maybe even tomorrow, um, it will take you directly to the discussion column. That way, I hope that we will attract people to want to get into a discussion uh, about some of these issues um and make it more engaging a more uh, a, a thing to people who may want to participate with in some way so i'll be interested in, in your reaction to that uh if you've looked at it in the last few days or if you can look at it after um, what it takes, it takes you now to something called notes the footnotes <laughs> which is the last place anybody would want to go by clicking on a, a conversation topic but uh, I hope. Have any of you thought of uh, entering your own comments on one of the pages? I've been paying an assistant to two two guys have been uh, making up things <laughs> uh, to enter on these comments for me. But I certainly hope other people will join in because uh, I was I've been doing something I call priming the pump. Mm. Trying to make it look like there's activity going on there hasn't yet been. Well, Meta, is there any uh, something called a plan for publicity, or is it written down? Uh, what? Mm -hmm. uh, no. How, how can we latch on to something? Mm -hmm. That's even a, a straw dog thing we could mm -hmm. then then go ahead to try and f make it better 
but it seems difficult when there's just um, nothing to hang on to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I can tell you, basically, I've just joined LinkedIn. They say that people actually read messages if, they, if it comes, uh, an email comes to them through LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I don't know anything about LinkedIn. Uh, but I do have uh, Facebook and Twitter, and with some a long experience of trying to promote things through Facebook, and again, I've been in a battle with Facebook to try to get them to recognize uh, Peace Magazine as a publication, and they're therefore exempt from some of the limitations that they impose on other people as far as freedom of speech goes. We're not allowed to talk about certain topics. But uh, we're trying, uh, again, we will continue that battle. It's been going on two or three months now, maybe three months. Uh, and I don't know whether we can or not, but, but certain things can be done. Now, there are groups. I have joined about 50 groups in Facebook. And there are groups on almost every topic you can think of. And what we can do is take uh, put messages onto those groups or share some of our videos or podcasts or our information about um, various things onto those groups. Uh, but they don't like for you to spam people and they can, you know, the question is, what is spamming? You know, if you put it on one or two, that's fine. But if you put it on a dozen, they will... You share uh, information to a dozen uh, uh, groups. Um, it's really a good way to do publicity, but it's um, they will give you a warning, or they'll cut you off and say you're not allowed to post anything for a week because you've been spamming people. So, uh, have you have any of you tried doing joining groups on Facebook? I bet a lot of you don't even belong, do you? Um, yeah. Well, I've. I forwarded stuff to, to for, you know, friends on Facebook. Um, I I hate using the Facebook, but I I do think it's probably necessary in this day and age. Mm -hmm. um, um, would they let? We have six six main topics. Um, would they if we picked? To a week of these topics, I pick, picked an organization that was relevant to share information with. Would would you get away with that? I don't know. Sure, I I think you can do. Each person could probably post up to about five things a day, hmm. and, and then it you know there's no rule book that will say at what point they cut you off, but it becomes iffier after you do about five. That's that's ample, and and that is uh, very helpful if people want to do that. Um, the other thing is um, on Twitter. I have been paying. Um, I had one of my young women working for me has been uh, pay, creating um, Twitter ads. And what you do is you write a post, a tweet, and and I have collected about a hundred um, handles, names of people with their Twitter address uh, for both individuals and groups, about a hundred for each uh, of the six categories. You can use up to a hundred and you pay and they'll send it out and then you pay according to how many people actually open it and pay attention to what you've sent them. And uh, so I'm paying... Um, well, each one, it runs about $150 a week for me to, uh, to do that. Uh, I don't know whether it's worthwhile, but it, um, I think probably it's as good as, because I've chosen handles of people or organizations that are um, prominent in their area. Like, for example, I'd have, I'd have uh, ICANN. On the on the list of uh, people in the war, war and weapons section and so on, so they will get the word out that way. Um, and how many people open it? It's not very many. People don't want to open these things. Well, maybe I have s sort of seen something wrong because I pay not much attention to it. But when you see something on the website you're interested in, wherever whatever the source, 
you often are offered a chance to share it on Facebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, anyone visited the, the Save the World website, shouldn't they be offered a chance to share it on Facebook and of maybe they course. already are? Adele, you're a genius. Why hadn't I thought of that? Absolutely. Oh dear. Okay, we have a whole new challenge for our website designers because it, it isn't. You're right, we haven't put that on there. And whether it's possible, I don't know. It all depends. I mean, every, we're using this thing called WordPress. And it is a special, uh, you know, app um, that is used just for websites. But I, I, I bet you we could have a, a share thing. Of course. Yeah. What do other people think? Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Have any of you used WordPress or is anything similar with a... Paul, do you have a website for a sustainable... Uh, buildings or whatever you call it uh, yeah and uh it was done on on a similar thing to wordpress but called squarespace so there's there, there's a number there's a number of them out there that uh that uh that, that allow for but what we were primarily looking for was something that we like the look of because we're aesthetic people um but also that we were able to without going to a programmer or coder we were able to do our own changes. So that changes was of what kind? What did you do? Well, well, ch changes to the content periodically. We can add projects. Mm -hmm. We can take. We can take things away. We can, yeah. We can. We can. We can add to the add to the content that's there and modify it. So. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Can you? Do you know if there's possible uh, thing with your program to put a share thing option on there? I don't know. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, well, that is definitely worth looking into. I think, don't don't you you all think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good idea. Uh, what I have done, uh, it's I've gone the other direction. I've gone to the the some of the social groups uh, on Facebook that I've joined, and I've borrowed uh, stories or articles from them and paste and put them on our comments columns. And then I send a hi, Paul. What's up? Hello, Paul. Well, well, well. Anyway, uh, 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 and then I put a note on the on the, that page saying thank you, and I, I hope you don't mind if I borrowed your, your thing. And, um, put it on ours, and of course they're all happy to have it done. But it gives me a, a little bit of a way to, to make a statement on, uh, on on their uh, group, uh, which uh, doesn't count against the spam <laughs> limitations. I think. Anyway, Paul. Yes. <laughs> Hello, oh. Paul Meyer. Hi. Hi. Are, are you there? Yes, yes, I am meta. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have thoughts to share? <laughs> well, we've uh, sort of uh, meandered around a bit, but I, I think the uh, point about uh, getting the, the website as the principal vehicle you know, remains uh, uh, really uh, a priority. Uh, I mean, you, uh, you mentioned uh, some helpers there. Mm -hmm. I think I said last time, I hope you can get some continuity there because it can be very you know, disruptive uh, with uh, people who are just sort of in, in, in and out and uh, uh, if it's not coordinated. Um, uh, so I, I think that uh, that remains uh, a sort of job number one and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, hope that that could be uh, managed. Uh, uh, I. You know, in terms of the cyber area, I, I, I sent you the submission uh, from uh, ICT for Peace, the uh, NGO that I'm uh, involved mm -hmm. with, and uh, mm -hmm. that had uh, helped uh, draft that. And that is uh, uh, currently uh, being uh, submitted uh, to the UN Office of Disarmament Affairs, which is uh, overseeing this, uh, uh, these new processes uh, at the intergovernmental level. Yeah, explain that a little bit, what you expect to come of that. Uh, that's not like uh, one of those GG uh, governmental experts groups. It's something different they're doing this time, is that right? Uh, 
yes, it is something different. And in fact, though, it's, it, there are two processes now. Uh, one is this group of governmental experts that you referred to, uh, which has been the manner for the last decade uh, that the, the UN has uh, sort of addressed the question of cybersecurity norms, uh, rules of the road, etc. cetera. Uh, but uh, the new um, process, uh, and I should mention for those who don't know, group of government or experts are always limited in their participation, usually in 15 to 25 uh, uh, individuals, uh, and they meet behind closed doors and uh, they have to have a consensus agreement uh, for any uh, report to come out. Um, the, the other process, the new one, is called an open-ended working group, and uh, as the name suggests, it's open to any interested um, member state of the UN uh, to participate. Uh, and uh, in my, uh, my opinion, uh, that will become the more important uh, process uh, going forward, and uh, it is... Uh, slated to have some sort of report on its progress by uh, the fall of uh, next next year. Well, uh, uh, do we have to look forward to the same kind of uh, polarization where the, the countries that are advanced simply block any or refuse to participate in anything? I think the Russians actually initiated something that started progressive several years ago are they was that fake or are, are, is there any real hope that russia would actually be willing to uh, you know have regulation for cyberspace well i think uh, uh russia has been a, a, a prime mover in the uh, in the international uh, arena on the issue uh, uh, and uh, it has i think uh, in some ways taken advantage of um, inability of, uh, of Western states to get uh, sort of concrete proposals uh, forward for, uh, I say, these rules of the road. Uh, and uh, perhaps unfortunately, with the current uh, leadership in the United States, uh, there's not much uh, engagement on multilateral uh, cooperative security matters uh, at all. Uh, but uh, we have to continue to uh, strive to uh, uh, see that uh, uh, you know, more sober minds uh, prevail ultimately, because as you note, uh, uh, the detrimental effects of irresponsible action in cyberspace are fairly significant. Yeah, uh, yeah. okay. Well, blessings to everybody who wants to make that a go. Uh, we're getting uh, toward uh, the end of the hour that I, I try to keep people into, but I, I do want to mention what you know is really on my mind. Uh, not a problem for you, but a, but it, you know eventually we've got a handle, and that is uh, this week I'm going to have my 88th birthday, and uh, and so um, you know I have to be very. <laughs> more and more concerned about uh, succession plans, and I'm getting nowhere. Um, I, I did talk to um, Earl Turcott about uh, transferring uh, ownership of Peace Magazine or management or con control of Peace Magazine to CNA and W. I don't think he wants it. Uh, I had originally also, or some time ago, mentioned it to Project Plowshares. I don't think they want it. I don't know anybody uh, or existing uh, organization that would like to take responsibility for the magazine, especially since, as it's now structured, the uh, to, you know uh, Project Save the World is a project of Peace Magazine, and therefore it's become kind. It may become like the tail that wags the dog, bigger and more uh, influential than the magazine. Um, and uh, I, that's fine with me if it happens, but I but I I don't know how to hand things over. Um, you, sir, uh, Al Parani, uh, who is um, a, a I don't know how many of you have met her, but she did the wiki work, uh, coordinating the wiki work on famine, uh, and uh, she's a very able uh, journalist. 
uh, from the Middle East, and uh, Paul met her this afternoon because we had this uh, no agenda conversation, which she participated in. She um, is um, uh, living in the in Yellowknife now, and um, uh, has just married, and her husband's trying to immigrate to Canada, but they have no prospect of immediately returning to Toronto. You know, it might happen someday, but they can't. They can't predict that. So she would be my f my most promising candidate to be editor of Peace Magazine, uh, but not. Uh, but that would leave out a lot of. Um, we would not be covering. Uh, we'd not have anybody doing major outreach. She's not somebody who. She's not an introvert by any means. She's an extrovert as, as far as it goes, but she doesn't have the kind of contacts that any of you on the screen have <laughs> and, uh, and therefore would not be able to really be very, you know, expand things or look in terms of reaching out and growing uh, very easily. So there's, there's that on my mind, uh, how to um, find somebody that I can turn things over to um, so, you know, I'm, I expect I will leave all my money to running Peace Magazine and, and the Project Save the World, but, um, and that would keep it going maybe 10 years. Um, but I have to have the right people to do it. So I want to, you know, ask each of you to kind of think about it. I, I spoke, um, I didn't even speak with her, but I, I had a, a sort of a, a, a an exchange with Erica Simpson, uh, who is a good writer, but she doesn't live in Toronto, and she has a lot of other other things on. You know, she's doing. She's a professor at Western uh, of uh, international relations. One, I, I w she would not. I, I think there are all kinds of problems with that as an option, but. Uh, I'm, I'm getting desperate, frankly. So I want to leave you with that. Uh, Meta, have you yeah. uh, thought about uh, approaching a journalism school in Toronto and uh, seeing um, if maybe initially even just as a, as a sort of internship uh, experience uh, to uh, uh, do something with Peace Magazine and, and maybe uh, with the right individual something more ambitious could be uh, planned down the road. But I hadn't thought of it, frankly. No, I hadn't. And because mostly, I don't think that the, the business of uh, fiddling with words is the main challenge of being an editor. The main challenge of being an editor is uh, reaching out to a lot of people and just plain, you know, talking them into doing things. <laughs> and. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, you have to be kind of bossy and, and <laughs> you know, demanding and, and wheedle and, you know, things like that. And, and only people with a good uh, network, you know, the size of your, of your network of associates that you can contact with ease is, I think, the most important thing. I just had an interview with Nigel Young. A, a couple of weeks or so ago. Uh, Nigel is uh, somebody who was in graduate school with me in Berkeley back in the 60s and it was a professor of peace studies at Colgate University until he returned to England about 15 years ago. And he um, uh, and I, he has just published a four volume encyclopedia of peace with Oxford University Press. And the first thing that we talked about was that the work of being an editor is not so much editing text uh, as it is, um, ha you know, just smoothing, you know, calling people all over the world and, and building relationships uh, so that people are, you know, in contact. So, you know, it, it needs to be somebody with a good um, grounding either, I would say, if not in peace, then in one of the other global threats, you know. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, what is this? Uh, Branka Marian? Is, is she, you know, she certainly knows her stuff on 
um, AI and uh, killer robots and things like that. I haven't even spoken to her, see whether she's that kind of person. You know her though, Paul, so what do you think? Well, only a, a little bit, and of course she is on the staff of Project uh, Plowshares, um, uh, but uh, you might uh, you might just ask if she had ideas. Yeah. Well, what about have you thought of have you talked to Elizabeth Renzetti at all? Did she give you any well, ideas? Well, uh, I, I talk to her occasionally, and not not very often, but she, you know they're moving to Berlin. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Doug has a, a fellowship or something for at least a year. I think it may be more in Berlin, and so they'll be overseas. Um, I could ask uh, if she knows anybody who, but you know, she, I will know more people in the peace movement than she does. And I don't think she has that. She knows a lot of people who are feminist women's movement act, you know, action, but that's not really part of our challenge. Um, people in the global warming, you know, climate change, that would be a, a real, could be a very real possibility if we knew somebody. So, you you don't if I just want you to think about it and um, bear it in mind that we've got to do something eventually and there's nothing urgent I'm <laughs> feeling healthy enough but I you know reality is reality so okay how about um, I don't know if I say uh, Wilf Wilf uh, at Canada you know they Wilf yeah, Women's International League of Peace yeah. and Freedom. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what they have as an operation in Canada, but they have something. Well, they have Ray Atchison, a Canadian, as running. Yeah, but I know, but she's international. I don't think that, yeah. that, that the international thing would, would take on Peace Magazine. No. Or would they? <laughs> I wouldn't think so, but you know, the only real offer I had, kind of an offer, was from Kai Brand Jacobson, who lives in Romania, and he wants it, but you know, that would move the magazine to Romania, of all places, and although he's an extremely outgoing person, and exactly the kind of personality with a huge, uh, you know, contacts all over the world, he would be great, but he's in Romania, you know, and I, I don't necessarily want to do that um so sorry Amanda I'm gonna have to uh depart now so uh, well, we all are I think it's the, time it's actually exactly yeah. nine o'clock my time so I thank I, you all <laughs> anybody final words on anything okay well, I thank, thank you all and uh, I'll send it send, keep you posted and see you next time okay Let's thank you okay thanks, thanks, thanks all bye-bye